back to another episode of Tactical Tuesday. Here you will learn how to get your ass across the street. It will involve using multiple units, taking multiple shots, order of movement, extremely important in getting your units moving before the primary unit is moving across. You are not moving the unit that you want across the road first. You will get shot, you will get shredded, and then when the other units are moving to try to get across, they will get shot and they will get shredded. So stop doing that and tune in and you will see how you get units across a highly contested road with one simple smoke grenade. Very simple, one grenade, not 50, one grenade gets the guys across. Also, one or more broken units will get your guys across. Take the lesson as a whole, do not break it down to one individual piece and say, that is unacceptable. The entire plan is necessary to execute effectively. You'll see how that occurs. We go into a discussion on that. We, of course, we add routing in for free, no extra charge. We add routing into the situation in terms of where do you want to move those units across the road? You always have to know where you're gonna to route to. If you fail to plan your route path before you move, you will be unsuccessful in many of your games. Pure and simple fact. So climb aboard, Get your stogies on. The paratroopers are attacking the town. Let's see how it goes. This is this is S41. This is called Sinks Encouragement. And I gotta be honest with you, I'm not sure why I have like five scenarios in the uh, thing, but I saw hell. Like I got five of these games. Got to find or figure out what the hell this is, this one's about. Um, so it's in Saint Combe du Bon, France, in June 8th, 1944. Uh, victory conditions, as you pretty much can dictate, uh, Americans win at game end by controlling all building hexes within two hexes of P6, which is the smack right smack dab in the middle. And so uh, all the ones that mark V, I mean, you can just you can just either eliminate the white, the yellow thing or not. But we'll just leave it there for now. So it's a good indicator. Uh, so the Germans set up uh, hex numbers less than or equal to eight. That's what the blue line's for. So they set up their back to the top. And the Americans uh, enter on, uh, enter on or after, or after turn one along the east edge. So um, that's an interesting distinction, on or after. So um, they, can, uh, they can enter essentially whenever they want to. Um, and sometimes they may may not want to enter, sometimes they, they might. So scenario special rules in this one are actually pretty odd. I'll read the second scenario special rule directly because it's easier. German 467s have a smoke exponent of three. Why would that be of note in this scenario? Uh, to retreat past that nice big central road, I would assume. Yeah, the big fat open ground road, right? So, yeah. and... Um, and the forces in this one, the Germans have three, four, six, sevens, four, 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 sevens, two liters, one which is of eight minus one, one medium and two lights. So not a lot of firepower. Uh, look at the terrain we're, we're dealing with here. What type of terrain? Um, there's pretty much two predominant types of terrain in this scenario. What are we looking at? It's like orchards and is that bocage? Uh, this is not identified as bocage. This is just it's identified as hedges. Yeah. Yeah, it's just hedges. regular hedges. So, uh, yeah, that's that's something that's new. Actually, I hadn't even thought about that. Uh, so hedges. This is again like what Mark says. The they they add the hedge rules in the expansion pack one, which is um a tight little pack, lots of infantry things, and so um that plus the open ground. So you're either firing the stone buildings or you're firing the open ground. Up, uh, you know, pretty much right. I mean, so. Uh, there's really nothing in between. Uh, there's no there's no woods in the middle that you get plus one to wooden buildings. Just nothing. It's just open ground or stone buildings. So the Germans, uh, you say, it's why are they spread out like that? Well, they're spread out like that due to scenario special rule one. 
As his first action in turn one, prep fire phase, the American player calls in three artillery strikes, which are the three little um, uh, acquisition markers down on the bottom. It says, uh, it says place a prep fire marker in each of three hexes. In this case, these guys just do targeting hexes. It really doesn't matter. Uh, for each marker, make a dice roll. If the colored die is one through four, the marker remains in that hex. So it's accurate 66% of the time. If it's a five or six, move the marker one hex as determined by the white die. So if we roll two dice, come on five. So two, one, those are accurate, accurate, accurate. That would be accurate. That's accurate. That would be inaccurate. So roll number six is a six, one. Let me make sure that's coming up properly. And of course, my screen's all fucked up. This chroma key's a pain, pain in the ass. Let's try that. So the last one will be an, an inaccurate artillery strike. And so, and it simply goes direction one. And when you're dealing with direction one, you start with the notation of the hex. So like, say if uh, Q5 were the location, Q5 where the hex, the, where the hex designation is, is direction one. And then you go clockwise, two, three, four, five, six. Six is to the left, two is to the right, and everything else. Behind. So it would go up by one hex and then blow everything up. So that's how you do the direction extent. So in case you guys were worried about that. And um, it says all units in the hex containing the marker and each of the six surrounding hexes immediately undergo a mortar attack. Oh my God. On the 16 firepower column, of the IFT applying terrain effect modifier normally with separate dice rolls for each attacked hex following the attack you remove the marker so essentially you get a lot of free 16 firepower attacks uh, that's why the Germans are all spread out and that's why most likely they're all going to be in stone buildings but they will be taking 16 firepower attacks in at least three well most likely three locations you know, because it's only going to drift one hex. So if you're going to place it on three units, it will attack those units regardless because it's only going to drift one hex away. And in this case, because they're set up like that, it can't possibly affect anybody else. So uh, right in the beginning, uh, this, this scenario is very, very different. So 16 chart, a seven will yield a morale check on everybody in stone buildings. So essentially you get a free morale check on everybody for all intents and purposes, if you roll seven. If you roll better than that, you get a better, better check. So um, taking that into account and that the Americans have to clear out, well, actually not clear out, but control all build hex, all building hexes within two hexes of P6 of the crossroads. So they got to control all the Vs. So look at your OB for the Americans. What do you, what do you see that that is slightly different for the Americans. Oh, I'm sorry, you don't know. Well, you can see it on the bottom here. They're all seven, seven, four sevens, one half squad, uh, a nine minus two leader, nine minus one, eight minus one. So they all have leadership modifiers. Which one is most likely going to be the building reducing attacker? <laughs> Probably the nine minus two, right? Sure, yeah. Uh, nine minus one and eight minus one. Uh, again, the, the typical rule with minus one leaders are, are especially, well, the stone buildings is kind of whatever, but they will help rally units much fast, much more, much more faster than eight zero leader. Essentially, wherever you are with the eight one, nine one, it's like you're in rally terrain. So you could be stuck in an orchard and let the eight minus one do its job and try to act like that self rally terrain. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, look at what the setup, this is with this particular setup. There's all different setups. You'll see different, res different, um, results going on here. So the Americans are coming, um, attack straight force. Let's look at where he's going to place his, oh, interesting. Okay. So, uh, he places two counters on the unit in R8, which is really interesting, and uh, one counter on the unit in Q6. So the unit in O8 is unscathed, and he will be able to defense the first fire at his leisure. Uh, uh, but the, hopefully, he's hoping to double break or at least break the guy 
in R8. Based on his setup, tell me, tell me how the two attacks is either effective or less effective on that particular unit based upon how the Americans are coming on. Because you have to set up first in the rally phase. And then the prep fire phase happens. And then you get to move. And then defensive fire and so on and so forth. Now, do you have to... The key question. Do you have to enter the game in the movement phase when you set up off board? No. Correct. You could simply advance onto the board. So if the worst case scenario, nothing happens to these guys, um, then you can simply advance and not take any shots from defensive first fire. What do you give up in so doing? Advancing fire. Advancing fire. What do the Americans have? They've all got assault fire. They all have assault fire. What are they going to, what are each of the squads, not half squads, what are each of the squads going to fire at in the advanced fire phase? have a five if they're by themselves it'd be a four shot right mm. or if they're adjacent to their target then they get an eight then shot it'd be an eight right so they have lots of firepower essentially at worst when the americans move they're equivalent to a stationary german unit so four four when the germans move they do not have assault fire they simply are have firepower they're just two so the Americans have the advantage of firepower, as you could plainly see, and they also have the, what other advantage do they, uh, what, not necessarily advantage, but the equivalency now based upon scenario special rule two, what else do the Americans have that can be a benefit to them? Well, that needs to be used, <laughs> i.e. needs to be used this game extensively. Uh, well, they have good old fashioned smoke. smoke. You need to have smoke. You do, you're, not, you're not getting to those objectives unless two things happen. Uh, the Germans roll shitty dice, or 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 Mark's playing the Germans, right, and yeah. uh, <laughs> or your artillery blows up everything on turn one, and then you essentially just come on unscathed. And uh, one of the scenarios replays, you'll see that happening, and you get to see the effect of that. Um, you might argue that's a bit dicey in that aspect, and I would probably agree with you, um, simply because if the three artillery strikes take out three units. Um, it's pretty much, you know, almost half of the German force and most likely one of those will be a leader. Uh, and the rest of the guys, as you see there are kind of spread out a little bit. So they're really, you know, to get to those when they rally route, how are they going to go? Uh, it might be problematic and considering the Americans have three leaders and only seven squads, they have decent mobility for what they have. Um, now uh you have to take into effect that you have though this turn is very the game is very short it's five turns long does that mean you need to rush onto the board and rush to the victory objectives how how fast can or how slow can we go to get to 05 and q5 essentially the last hexes that are furthest away from the map board edges how long will it take well, us even just, even just the salt move advance it's three turns you're there right three turns so we got two turns to screw around right so um uh in this particular instance the uh the american player really not sure why he wants to go right down the middle of the open ground uh if if the units in this location advance into q10 and they all break or are they routing <laughs> Um, well, I mean, in like, theory, yeah, I mean, in theory, they like can... T10 is there, it's where they, uh, one, two, three, one, two, uh, either T10, yeah, it'd have to be T10. Yeah, but except they can't, if the, if the German unit is still in R8, <laughs> they can't even go that way, but they can't. No, they, they could, they could, so let's check this out, so... Q10. That's right, I'm sorry, they're in Q10, right, so they, they would, yeah. they would still always so be 2 would have to be their target hex. Okay, so let's go to Q10. Let's say that we route to, to R10. We don't low, we don't low crawl because we're men, right? Oh, and we route I to, think you're gonna have line of sight then to those guys, won't you? We might see T5. I don't know. Yeah, I'll bet you do. Yeah. So that's a range of six. So when we go to S10, that is a range of 
five. And so that's safe for shits and giggles because all these guys break, they go here. Are you going to route this way? The same thing applies. Now you get to see this unit. So you're only going one hex and then that's all you're going ever. Ever people. Because that's normal range to this. You can't route here and you can't route back that direction. So if all these units break here from some lucky bullshit shot, right? I mean, let's say you would just assault move on. Uh, that's a four minus one. That's not the, you, with seven morale, four minus one, you're taking a morale check almost all the time. And yeah, you got a nine minus two leader, but let's just say it's one of these guys, you know? A nine minus two leader can break just like everybody else. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, you could roll 10, 11, 12, that can happen. And when he breaks, everyone's, uh, the other guys could disintegrate. So, again, before you move, you have to know where you're going to route to. What happens with these guys when they go here, they break, and they say, "Oh shit, okay, got to oh, I'm gonna low crawl because it's open ground. Most mostly everyone will low crawl. Which eight morale? You only got so many units. Um, yeah, you could probably low crawl a hex, and then hopefully everyone will blow this other guy away. But let's say you just low crawl a hex, and these guys don't blow anybody away." Or, or they do or they break some people let's say they break this guy uh, but they don't break this guy you know let's say this guy remains unscathed or somebody else gets within normal range you know or whatever like that um, let's say we we break and then we go here I'm uh, yeah. and we're I'm just gonna put like a broken unit here I'm gonna clone this guy so we, we low crawl and we're broken here we break a Q10, then we low crawl here. What happens next? The next route phase. This the game situation is exactly the same. The, let's say the four six seven is broken. The four four seven is not. Well, let's say the four four seven and the four six seven are broken. Let's say the Americans kick their asses and they're all happy. You know, there's smoke. Oh, I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six. It still doesn't matter to this unit. He still has he still has to route because he's in normal range and in open ground from this guy. And from this guy. Okay, yeah. And, then, and he can't route, so he will be eliminated for failure to route. Straight up. Breaking here and not destroying these units, at least the one, I mean... It, First of all, if you break there, you're looking at long range. And so do you get assault fire at long range? No. Nope. So you get jack shit, especially this unit here. This stack here, if he enters 010 and he tries to break this unit to save his buddies later, how much firepower will he have? This is uh, this is important. I'm taking time on this because this is, this is how you lose games on turn one. Before the game starts, this is how you lose games. I'm not saying that he lost the game, but I'm, what I'm saying is you, we need to look at this. Because how much firepower, if he goes to 10 and this guy, well, this guy has to break from these guys and not from, so you can't fire on everybody. So somebody's got to have a line of sight to that hex, force that unit to route, he will be eliminated. And if, let's say one guy routed here, one guy routed here, what's his, what's his problem? You know, these guys are broken, he's still there, he can't route, but he's these these guys are broken units, so he can stay alive if both of these guys are broken. If either one of these guys in a stone building remains unbroken, these units are eliminated as well. So you've got your 9 minus 2, 3 squads, being a machine gun, going into Q10, taking two 4 minus 1 shots, because that's who I'm firing at. I mean, that's a stack of dudes. That's just a stack of dudes. You're, you're, you're attacking that stack. If he comes in as a stack, right? If they break here, they're going to be out. Let's say they don't even get eliminated from failure route. You will be DM'd for at least two to three turns, if not longer. Are, are you going to be taking anything in two to three turns? And how long is this scenario? It's five turns. Yeah. Five, yeah. You know, you got you got to rally get, to get your ass up there at that point as fast as you can. And plus, when your stack is out, when your big boy is out, you know what? What are you going to be taking buildings with? Nothing. These eight, these eight ones and nine ones aren't going to be doing anything. I mean, they're going to be rallying a couple of units. You might get a couple of lucky shots. You know, it's still plus two. That's a great defense. You know, and the Germans have numbers, so it's, it, you have to control all those buildings. So, um, 
Andrew and Q10 might look great for every this way to get to this location might be great, but where is the obvious approach from this in this scenario? Where would you I guys would, approach from? I would, I would think over that way. I mean, you've got the block line of sight because of the hedge, so then all you got to do is worry about this guy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, hell, you could move to U10, T9, right? You're getting plus two from this guy because the hindrance is. And let's say you're 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 brave and and you know you're a badass and you move to S nine. Can this unit even fire on you? No, block no. line of sight. Yeah, the hedges block same level line of sight when they're not adjacent to your hex. So the S eight T seven S seven, this th these two hex sides right here will block line of sight from that unit to that unit for those that are unfamiliar with hedges. So hedges are like half level. You know, at this point. For all intents and purposes, on this map, hedges block all LOS unless you're adjacent to them. I won't go into the other rules about how you advantage over them, so we're not going to bother with that. Because there, there is no height advantage in this game. So, the hedges are your friends in this scenario. So we could actually be in S9 and only be attacked by one unit. So if this guy breaks, which... How many artillery shots are we taking on that guy? We're taking two. This guy, this guy we want to break, period. Right? So he's going to break. This guy over here, let me unbreak him, is not even being attacked. So he's going to get a shot on somebody. One, two, three, four hex range. He covers that entire side of the board. He's going to fire and subsequent first fire on somebody. So even if you move to S10, thinking that's a free ride, you're still getting a minus two shot there. Because, and again, if he moves first... If you were to move anybody in this scenario, when at four, this 467 breaks, who do you want to move? You're kind of screwed either way, in my opinion. Who would you want to move to screw this guy over? Taking nothing else into account. Looking at a guy here. Right. Looking at a guy here. And what's in that stack? Open up that stack and tell me what's in that stack that you most likely will be moving. A half squad. The half, the, the half idiot, right? He's simply going to be going up here. He doesn't have to fire on him, right? If you're the German, you don't have to fire this guy at all. You want that first shot. Because if you fire on this guy, now you're stuck and locked in that position. You don't care about the half squad. The half squad is going to be one to two close combat. He's he's a non-factor. You want the four minus one, four minus two on somebody. Because this guy's going to break. Yeah, most likely. So uh, so let's get that point. But, but, but what I'm saying is this is... There's nothing but open ground here, and there's no real rally terrain to move to. Let's say we go 0-10, he breaks, he goes o and 10, he's done. That's that's his that's his birthplace and death place right there. These units could then move and destroy him. He's got line of sight to that location. If he has no targets, who's he gonna fire on? And the 8-1 doesn't have the uh, medium machine gun. Who's he going to fire at? He's got no other targets. If, if all the Americans are cowering over here, he's got no other targets. This guy's going to get shredded. That's an eight even. He's just going to get shredded. Good spot with four, the four, six, seven, mind you. One, two, three, four, five, six X's. He's got two of them. Uh, this one, this a four, six, seven over here might be a little bit more efficient simply because he could reach the edge of the board. Uh, back here, there's not really any, there's, it's all within four hexes. All targets are up there within four hexes. But be that as it may, it's where he wants to put it. I have no problem with that. The LMG reaches out and touches just as just as effective. So, so we're shredding here. Very nice thing about this. One nice thing about this one here is he's got. I'm pretty sure he's got line of sight there. Oh yeah, that's that's that should be clear as a bell. So that's going to be a you know two down one or two down two shot. Right. And the, and that's probably the shot you're going to take first because this guy may have to wait for somebody else a sweeter target because he's going to have the highest firepower on this side if the nine minus two wants to move this way then you're blasting the nine minus two with four instead of you know you don't want to fire both these guys you want independent shots and then fire them together as a well the, then fire the lmg as a subsequent first fire shot at sustained fire well sustained however i think it's a subsequent first fire take the breakdown possibilities of one minus two because once the american gets in the stone building is a six plus three going to do anything to it no, no. So the, the key to the scenario is shots in the open ground. Shots in the open ground is where guys are most likely going to break. Unless you have a stack like this going into the building, he's going to have like 55 firepower plus one. So he's going to be vaporizing one hex per turn. How many turns do we have? 
Five. We have five turns, upper left. So he can't take too many prep fire shots. And if you skulk, you can get out of a shot and jump back up. If he's prep firing, he's not moving. And uh, does he have to move? Does the nine minus one, is the nine minus one be going to be the guy that's going to be assaulting things across streets? Probably not. He's probably going to be softening them up. These other jokers are the ones that are going to be taking flanks and stuff like drop, you know, doing whatever, like a flanker over here. These are the guys going to be doing the nitty gritty work. The nine minus two is going to be sitting in the middle, smoking a giant stogie and uh, just telling guys to blast people. And uh, most likely, most likely. But, you know, we all know things, the plans go south really fast. So uh, that's just the approach here. Let's just see what happens in this particular scenario. Again, I just wanted to kind of get you the feel, the introduction of, you know, when you're approaching a scenario like this, uh, you know, even though this is kind of far over here, how far, can, how far is this guy most likely going to move in a movement phase? How far do you think he'll get? How far do you think he'll get? In movement phase? Probably yeah. one half. Do you think? Do you think it's possible he can get the Q8? That's eh, eh, eh. He might get there. Let's say he gets the Q8, but he has to go through here. So he's taking tons of shots, right? Maybe not tons of shots, but very risky shots to get there. We could easily get there from moving this direction. One, two, three, four, five. You know, six, seven by counter exhausting, and then advance here in the advance phase. We're in the same spot, but none of that's open ground. This is a minus one shot from this guy, but obviously we're gonna maybe try and bait something out over here. But even if we enter U10, one, two, you know, three, four, smoke, or whatever, because this guy's gonna get blasted. Three, four, you know, five, or just three, four, then advance there. Much safer, much safer approach. But if you wanna go this way, go for it, because this guy's gonna be broken. But uh, if you break, uh, those guys are probably going to be gone. And the Germans, the Germans, do the Germans care if they lose units? Are the German, is the German OB part of the victory conditions? I uh, know, no, just holding on to buildings. Just control the buildings. All the Germans can be eliminated from the map and still win the game. So the Germans simply need to slow down or break the Americans and keep them broken or DM'd or otherwise otherwise occupied close combat works just as well the problem we have in close combat is the americans have us at a three to two we're about a one to one ratio in squads we're mono -y mono in squads but it's seven to four he has three to two advantage of us but close combat anybody can roll that five or six you know anybody can roll that and that can be very dangerous very dangerous but uh, so let's just kind of burn through this one. We got a couple to go through again. Just when you're when you're looking at a scenario, take apart. Kind of you want to take apart where your plan is. The, the the problem in this scenario is what? I mean, look at look look at where the victory conditions are. We're on every we're on every corner. Of this pretty pretty much square. We got to get over here, cross the road, get over there, cross the road, get over here, cross the road, get over. We've got to cross the road. So if you are not using smoke in this scenario, you will lose the game period unless you unless you're playing mark right that, that's it unless you're playing mark you're not gonna you're not gonna win this game <coughs> so let's see what happens and let's see you know although there might be times you might want to try and bait a shot by just running across the street and then you know the guys will be first fired there's all these strategies and that's why sl is is uh is fun is maybe i maybe i want him to shoot maybe i want him to shoot and break me why do i want him to shoot and break me why would I want that to happen? You know, well, we're almost always got the lead. You could route six six movement factors forward. And it's possible. Or like if we're if we're right here, if we're already occupying these buildings, let's just say we don't even have a assault mover. Let's just say we move. Like we're gonna burn to this hex right here. Let's pressure him. Say, okay, I'm going here or I'm going here. Right? Because I'm gonna make it into S six. And he has no LOS to any enemy that's behind him. He moves to S6 because he wants somebody to first fire on him because he wants to run across the road. Doesn't even drop smoke. Screw smoke. I ain't got time for smoke. He may burn a shot. If he breaks, where's he going to route? He's going to route right back to the location he came from. Who's likely to be in that location? Probably a leader. Nine minus two leader. Yeah, nine minus two, eight minus one. Nine minus, somebody's going to be uh, somebody's going to be one of these hexes that's going to rally him. Maybe even this one. So are, are the Germans going to be shooting at the broken unit or going to be dealing with the American firepower that's like 20 firepower staring at them? Ah, it's probably going to be firing at the 20 firepower. So you're coming up. Next rally phase, you'll be DM'd. Do we care? That's a six to rally. 
with under a, a minus one leader, six to rally. Phase after that, 10 to rally. So six or 10. So you're coming up at the beginning of the Americans player turn when you don't have DM, almost 100% of the time. You know, one out of every 12 times, you are not coming, you are not rallying. So, uh, so throw into the extra six dice roll that you have before that, you've got like a 94% chance or 95% chance of rallying within those two phases. So you're coming back. And uh, that's a problem for the, for, the, for the Germans. So um, so let's move forward. He's going he's gonna to blast some things. Boom, boom, boom. We've got a pin. We do have the break here. And we got a pin and a break in the middle. We're moving our squad on the right-hand flank. I'm going to burn these a little pretty quick. You see the residual firepower. He does break. And uh, if you guys want to follow some of the action, you could double click on the stacks and so you can expand the stacks so you can kind of see what's in there some of the stacks. Again, here's our 337. Does exactly what he's supposed to do. This guy takes a shot first. Hopefully it's the squad. Uh, maybe the whole thing fired on him. But, uh, oh, it's one residual. So it's probably the light machine gun. Nine minus two is here. Thinking that it's free and clear. Do you want to move him first? Yeah, I wouldn't have done that. Do you want to move him first? This guy is the guy that's going to be rallying. Even if you move everybody else in that location and they break, at least they get to route back one hex and you get a chance to rally when the 9 minus 2 comes on here. Breaking him first. This is very similar to the 8 minus 1 assault across the road in um, uh, Release from the East. This is the the piece in the game that is going to win you the game. If, if ever everything else is even... This is the one piece that the Germans do not have. You, they've got a medium. You got a medium. You got squads. They got squads. He doesn't have Mr. Badass here in the middle. All right. Yeah, Mr. Badass right there in the middle. So losing him to a stupid four minus two shot is not what you want. You want squads flooding these guys. He hasn't fired yet. If anything, what can you do? <clears throat> what can you do with somebody from here that hasn't fired yet or one of these guys if if you wanted to move mr badass into qa what's one way to get in there because your objective is badass needs to be in q8 at the end of this turn or r7 i mean i don't know it depends on how badly you want to do it i suppose you could no he needs to be there he well, yeah but i mean yeah i mean well you know one of the one of the um i mean you know i mean i mean one of the 747s could move into i mean it's good in theory move to q10 try to smoke his own uh try to smoke the next tax up um right. still would, yeah yeah absolutely necessarily... you, you, could, what I was you could also potentially go around you know this way right and then yeah, so you, yeah. You, yeah, you're still taking a four minus two shot over here. But yeah, you can move a squad there. You can just simply move a squad there. One, drop smoke for three, and then you could do four and move the extra move an extra location. Either four here, four here, four there, or just stop. Or you can assault move into Q10, sure. drop smoke, because you don't want to take you you want to try and get that smoke off. But if he fires on you here. If he fires on you here, whether you assault move or not, does that accomplish protection from for Mister Badass? If this gives him some, you, you, you be, well, but right now, yeah, at this moment, yes, yeah. because now it, he can't. It fire. eliminates that four minus two shot, and even the two minus two from that uh, second line squad. Right. So, so this, you still have to worry about a two minus two from the other second line squad. So we move here, right? So this guy doesn't have LOS to us here. So the only person that can right. fire on us is this guy. So he fires on us and we break. And we don't get smoke. We just assault moved on there. He says, I'm firing. Boom. Now, where's Mr. Badass going? Let's say he first fired the whole way. The R9? Yeah, you can, you, you, you can go around this way. Can you go right down the middle of Q8? Is that a safe route? If he's already first fired, then you're good. I I thought all he fired was the uh, machine gun. Yeah, let's just say he first fired, because I that from what's depicting on here, um, it, it looks like uh, obviously he probably he may not have fired. Let's see if there's that's even LOS. Yeah, it's clear LOS. 
So he's going to have clear us to that location. But it's going to be two minus two. But we don't want to take a four minus two. Are we? Are we? Do we care about this unit anymore that he fired and broke our guy here? No. No. Because he can't. He can't fire on Mr. Badass. This guy can if he's not subsequent fire. If he's like that, he could fire two minus two. That's the only shot he's going to get. So what can we do with this unit? With the other? With the other four four seven four seven? Let's say I don't want to take a two minus two either. I'm Mr. Psycho, and every time I roll a morale check with my nine morale units, I roll a ten. So I am not taking a morale check on that guy. Two and smoke. Right, one, two, drop smoke for four. We missed. Well, we tried. Guess what? What do we have over here? One, two, one. smoke. We got screwed. That's what happens. You get screwed, but that's fine. That's part of the game. What can Mr. Badass do? One. Two. Drop smoke. Because he's Mr. Badass, he got to roll a one. Three, four. And then he just goes assault. Or he can either move into the hex or move here for five. And then advance into here later. Now he's in Q8. Or this unit can then. Go, I wouldn't want to go there because then he could subsequent for his fire. Uh, no, no, yeah, de yeah, definitely don't go into P8 because he could wait until a defensive fire phase until the smoke dissipates and fire upon you. If yeah. Mr. Badass drops the smoke here, then Mr. 9 minus 1 can simply go directly this way. And then Mr. 9 minus 1 goes in there. And then Questions, he can. Stu? Sure. Um, the 9 minus 2 can apply its leadership modifier to a smoke throw. It may not. Oh, I thought you said. It sounded like you said it helped with the smoke. Well, it helped in terms of being able to move units up there and continue to move. Oh, I thought you said I thought you said a one for smoke or something. I misheard. Okay. No, he he, he rolled a one. Rolled that a just one. shows that he's Mr. Badass because he rolls a one oh, instead oh, of like a two or three. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, he's got smoke for days. That's it. See, he throws one of his cigars out in front, and all that smoke from that giant giant Cuban cigar uh, generates all that good smoke. So it's a good quality smoke. So. Uh, so yeah, so we're smoking the living shit out of this area. Why can we just move guys one hex and smoke and, and be done? Why can we do that? Well, we, we, we got you've got plenty of time. I mean, you've got time to do it. Right. We don't we don't need to be in P six at the end of turn one. Right. If if we move two hexes per turn, like Mark said, we're there in three turns. So if we move up here and start dropping smoke, attempting to drop smoke to get guys at least two to three hexes. Then we're golden. You just do that turn. You rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. Where do we want to be? If if we are adjacent to an enemy unit, he's going to have some firepower. Eight plus three, right? Not too bad. We'll get we'll get that in a second. So anyway, point is, smoke, smoke as much as possible. In terms of getting smoke to where you want to, think of. It's kind of inadvertently thinking of where you can route to can this guy get smoked there people say well maybe not you know i i want him to move up i want him to be an r7 well he can get to r7 but he can also place smoke here by going one two three four five and then you know advance here that's close to r7 that might be close enough if mr badass doesn't want to take a shot so sometimes you may have to adjust your route uh depending on you know what mr badass wants to do you know so smoke remember a minus two shot versus a plus one shot is a three column shift essentially on the firepower if he fires a four or i'd say a two minus two right that's essentially a six shot if he fires a two plus one that's going to be a one column you are three column shift on that so he needs to roll from a four to a seven is the effectiveness of that attack. From a, like a 25% chance of getting morale check to a like 54 or whatever the percent chance of getting morale check. You want to give him the 24 every single time. Unless you're desperate. At that point, at that point we, don't ha we don't have a chance. We don't have a choice. So let's just continue uh, uh, these guys here. But again, smoke, 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 smoke. We're, we're Americans. We're Americans with three smoke exponent. We need to smoke all the time. This guy here, he moved straight. What should he have done at the end of his movement phase? 
What's this guy gonna do? Smoke his own hex. Smoke the own hex. Does that stop this unit from entering R7? No, because if that was the plan, one, two, three, four, five, six. Still gets to R7. Sometimes you may not want to smoke because that might impede the movement of your other enemies or your other allies. It doesn't do that in this case. Oh, that's the only consideration you probably need to have, or the primary consideration is if I drop smoke, can my guys get to where they need to get to? And most of the time it's yeah, but he's got one more movement factor. Just smoke it because maybe maybe this guy moves here and this guy says, okay, I'm going to take a shot because I'm not going to get any other shots. Now it's a, you know, plus three, plus, it's a, at least a plus two modifier. It's going to be nasty. So this guy is very, very safe from this six shot. Well, he's already first fired, so he, he can't even fire at anybody beyond him. But again, end of movement. If it's not going to impede the movement of anybody else, just drop smoke just to get into the habit of placing smoke. Will it do anything? No, he rolled a five. Nothing happens. But your opponent knows that you know what the hell you're doing when you're dropping smoke everywhere. It's like, oh God, I got to worry about this guy dropping smoke everywhere. These guys are moving up. This guy moves here. He takes a shot. And then I guess he skedaddles. I guess he doesn't want to go that way, so he runs, he runs to the right. Again, same sort of thing. This unit here that moved there could have moved here, dropped smoke, and then moved there. One, two, three, four. He's in the exact same location. That would have dropped a smoke right here. And that would have, I think, that would not have impeded that shot from that guy. It still would have missed him. But the unit could have moved to P10 instead. And then, then be shrouded by the smoke. And then go this way. He probably didn't see that shot. Sometimes it's tricky. Sometimes these, these attacks are tricky. So now we're, we're now plow, plow to the right. Not a problem. Advance fire. Guys get blasted. One, two, three. That is the closest cover. Good deal. Okay. The German. Or do you care about this unit on the right hand side? You are the German player. Do you care about that 747 that is not CX anymore? Over here. What did he just do? Well, first of all, it's the only place that he can go to, right? So that, that, that's not a problem with him routing. That's three three movement factors away. That's He could continue to Z5 if he wished, but he stopped here, which is fine. Now, if we stop here, what's the difference between stopping here and going to Z5? For the American, is there is there any difference? Anybody can chime in. Is there any difference? Why stop at Z five when I can go to Z, why stop at Y six when I can go to Z five? You're closer. Closer You're and victory. and what else? What else? What could the German do next turn? DM you. He could he could DM you and almost kill you. All right, because he can go one two three four five six be adjacent to you. Now you have to start rounding somewhere else, and now you just. He just guns you down. Is moving this German on this side a big issue? Is that a problem for the Germans? Strategically. Is this a strategic miscue? No, he can just go back. He can go back. Let's say the Americans have occupy this location and occupy and could fire on all these locations over here. Where is the German unit going to go? And this is what you got to think about, guys. Well, he doesn't want to break. We pursue this guy. Again, we, we're thinking about this, right? Right? Victory conditions are in the center of the board. Okay. They're in the center of the board. Is this a part of the victory conditions? We are mono y mono in men. He has seven squads. We have seven squads. That is an LMG, which can be a part of the equation. Essentially, he'll get two shots. So if we pull him out and he's broken, we don't have much defense in the middle. He's obviously coming over this direction. This guy's obviously coming down. He's obviously coming down, most likely. It's not going to be a free ride. It's going to be a free ride across this road. He's still good. He's still good. Excuse me. Is it going to be a huge problem if he comes over here and kind of leaves part of this defense out? What advantages and disadvantages? First of all, what disadvantages do we have 
if we pursue this unit and let's say it takes us a turn and a half and we eventually we shoot him or he has to he has low crawl here and then we could prep fire on him six firepower he fails morale check then he low crawls and then uh defensive fire next phase we do a six firepower and he fails morale check and he dies so one turn later after we move here on turn two this unit is eliminated at the end of turn two so the beginning of America turn three, this unit is free and clear over here. Let me move him over there. And this is more strategy than I'm gonna label. Okay. So he's over here. This guy's gone. Uh oh. Yep. Not a care about really. He's here and he's and and uh these are out from here. Americans are coming up through here. I see the Americans get over here and they're press pressuring this building pretty hard. How are we in position over here? Is this a is this a detriment? Can we take advantage of that? Is it nothing but disadvantageous? Should we never go and get rid of this unit? Well, I like it because you can move we can move down behind them now. What does that do for and, us? Well, for one, you could eliminate a route path for the Americans, and for two, you could regain control of these buildings after he's crossed the road and gone over here. All right, cross the road. If we fail our smoke rolls, just like we did down here, either the American doesn't move, or he assault moves with a minus one in the open. We've got a couple four minus ones that we're probably gonna take. Hopefully we won't be broken. We do have a medium machine gun that is just pinned, so he's up and going, just the leader broke. Uh, he's not going to be there forever. But yeah, the route pass. If we break a unit right here and we made it over here or over here in our next move, one, two, three, and then because we're CX, and then just say we advance here and he breaks a unit right here, where's he? Where's the a broken American unit going to route right there if this guy is in this location? 447 is in 06. Okay, 06 is where he's at. Where's that clone? Let me clone this guy again. America unit breaks an S7. Where's he have to uh, route? You have to route over to S6, you know, based on the current board. All right. Well, he could route straight down, right? But he just can't route into our buildings in the beginning. Not, not if, uh... Just Gibson. There you go. Not leave. Just, just mute. Just feed. Just oh. feedback. Oh, we'll come back. Oh, there yeah. we go. There we go. Cool. Excellent. Oh, no. <laughs> all right yeah. no it's gone yeah yeah so he's quick he's quick so um so yeah if, if a unit breaks an s7 where's he gonna route yeah he could go back one he can go straight down because if we're in w9 that's one two three four that's still four here he could route straight right. down this row here but the point is is he could route technically he could he'd have to route to r8 but that's within striking distance of our unit next turn one two three four or three and then advance here. We could try to keep this unit DM. Are these units, if these units turn around and deal with this guy, how many units does he have, do the American have to turn around? Look at all this orchard. If I'm in V9, that's like a wooden building if these guys are over here, right? If I'm over here, that's a stone building, two hindrances, one hindrance from this guy. It's a stone building. It's the same thing as being across the street, except he can't route that direction. Anybody breaking over here, especially if he's right here, if if we happen to make our way to V10, and this guy broke in S7, then he has to route that way. Away from our victory conditions. At that point, he's, uh, by this point of the game, he's probably out of the game. Because this will probably be about turn three and a half, turn four. This guy, is stopping the rallying of the units. If we break a unit, he's gone. Is this guy over here rallying? When's this guy rallying? You tell me. When's this guy, when is this guy rallying? Most likely. He's not gonna rally the, the he's not gonna rally the German player turn, right? It's because we don't have a leader. Right. So DM, let's, let's assume the DM's gonna, best, best case scenario, DM's gone. 
we're going to try to rally in the American player turn, assuming nobody else is broken that we need to sell. That takes priority. Right. So you need a six, which is less than 50%. Right. And then, well, the plus one to, well, uh, so he can route to end 10. So right. we, okay. well, we need a seven. Not great, not bad, but it, it's there. Let's say if we fail that, then we have to wait until the next America turn. By that time, you know we're going to have somebody broken somewhere. So for all intents and purposes, if this guy doesn't make his first rally attempt, he is probably going to be out of the game because the other units are going to be taking priority. If I have a 747 up here with eight morale, uh, he needs to rally to get up and going. Uh, if the Americans abandon this stuff, he might be a priority to do what? Why might this guy be a priority, this 337 over in this corner? I don't want to be taking as much time as I am, but it's important concepts and strategy. So if 337 is over here, why would we want to prioritize a rally here versus a 747 that's DM'd over here? Cut the route pass for the unit, German units within the victory condition hexes. Right. We rally here, one, two, three, four, five, six, or five, or something like that. So he can't start coming this way or make his way up. Very, very exactly. One, two turns, and then there, he's just done. He's, he's just done. Exactly. 337 is doing the exact same thing as a 467 over here. Slightly more firepower, same result. Very small, very close in board. Um, is he going to, can he pull units off to deal with them? Sure, he could actually be in the victory location hexes and deal with this guy. But guess what? He's a 337. We want these guys to be shooting at him, not at our 747s. So this could be a priority if there's like only one unit over here. Now, if there's more than that, obviously it's probably not a priority because if you don't have any firepower to break these guys, you, there's no route pass can be cut because no one's gonna be broken. So you need, you need the ability to break people for him to be effective. Um, because the Americans have to cross the road, the Germans have the ability to break the Americans. Therefore, this unit coming around backside is probably slightly more valid, powerful than this unit coming this way if the Americans, because the Americans have to be moving, the Germans don't. Slightly more powerful, but the effect is the same. Both both people can do the exactly same thing. And I think in Craig's game, I think the, I'll probably do that one next maybe, um, that situation kind of comes up. So that's what we're looking at there. So we're just gonna progress through this game. Again, you might think a guy broken over here, uh, he, he, who cares, it, it has no impact on the game. If we ignore him, What's gonna happen? We move over here to S6. When's he rallying? Probably on the American rally phase. Right, what do we need? Just an eight. Eight? Eight's pretty damn good. Where's he going then? When this unit moves here, and this unit comes in here, this unit stays here and everyone else kind of collapses, assuming they collapse, that's the standard thing. What's this guy gonna do? Head to the rear. Yeah. He goes backwards. Come over this way. He goes backwards. Absolutely. Does he need to engage anybody in firefights? No. No. He's not going to have the cover. He's going to be in hedge terrain plus one. You probably don't want to take him around check. You definitely want to use smoke as much as possible. Smoke and then assault move or something like that. You know, just to move one hex at a time so he's not getting you for you know, whatever. Uh, you don't want him to break because then he has to route to that location. Actually, he doesn't have to if he's right there, but uh, you want him to stay alive as much as possible. You know, then you could do a couple fires. There's a couple spots you could fire on there. Not a lot, but again, your six plus three is really not going to be doing anything. You'd have to be adjacent to actually have an impact. Um, can he get adjacent? Yes, absolutely. He can get adjacent, but uh, the idea is the same. If he gets up, up and around over here, nobody's routing that direction. They all have to go across the street. So in terms of routing, it looks like... Um, uh, take a look at the village. Everyone clear their map and tell me where... If you were the Germans, um, where you want to route... If you were to, if you were to break in any of those hexes, which, where on the positioning on that board would you want to be routing to? Okay, left hand side. What about up through here? Or down here? Too much open ground. Right, visually to me, visually to me, of course it all depends on where the Americans come on. Visually to me, defending this area here heavy 
can be detrimental to your health. A mini machine gun sitting right here covers that entire road for interdiction purposes. And a 747 here covers that road, or 337 for that matter, just sitting there, you know, drinking a couple of brewskis, you know. So you're not really routing without interdiction. Do you want to low crawl in open ground when Americans are around? No, you really don't because they're just going to fire you a six firepower even and you're just going to die. That's a, that's a morale check on average every single time. So you might as well take the morale check, the one morale check, to get the hell across the road. You're taking the morale check either now or later. It doesn't matter. You might as well take the interjection to get the hell across the road. And you might be able to continue back here. So there's much more, the higher density of buildings that you can move the hell away from the Americans to protect yourself. Up here, what's what's the issue of going up here? There's a good density of building up here. What's the issue up here? Too far away from the victory conditions. And what do we have to do to get to them, John? You have to cross more open ground. You gotta cross the open ground just like the Americans do. We don't have to do that on this side. So just visually looking at the board, strategizing for your setup and where you might want the end game to be, you might want the end game to appear up over here. In some of these games, it exactly happens that way. The end game is over here because this is a better area to look at. This initially looks like a powerhouse of an area, but um, once you get across that road, you uh, you know, obviously, scenario special rule two, Germans have smoke exponent of three, you can possibly get across the road, but you're going to be taking shots. So that's probably another reason why the scenario special rule two exists and which probably everyone forgets. Uh, I don't think I saw smoke from the Germans at all in this scenario. Um, that's an easy one to forget because if you've played the Germans, you never have that much smoke. That's all there's to it. So it's very easy to forget. Something like that, a scenario special rule two like that, this is what I would do. Right there. And I would put it right here and leave it there the rest of the game. That way you're looking at it constantly, okay? And you're not forgetting about it. Because what will happen is, turn four come around, it's like, oh shit, I could have got across the street on turn two because of my smoke to dice roll modifier. Say, Stu, that's never going to come into play. The, you know, the Germans are going to be shooting and stuff like that. Are the Germans probably going to be moving a lot? Yeah, maybe, maybe not. But if they're not moving, what can they be doing to help the other guy move? Drop smoke in the middle of the road. A smoke in P6 blocks all fire back to P4 and P5. Everybody just runs across the road. But if you don't remember this, you may not ever think of that. So some scenario special rules make yourself a little a little label. label. There's a little label counter that you have. Uh, you've got label. This is just a label counter. They've got label um, like boxes. You could like like, like that's, how, that's how the paragraphs on the right hand side are there do that just you just got just put it right on the middle of the board right over here no one's gonna be over here just put it there put it down here you know put it up no one's gonna be up here put it up there you know give yourself a reminder this is a reminder it's like a sniper card on the side right you get your little sniper three card whatever same thing little reminders because it, it's there for a reason we need smoke for a reason and getting across the road because if we have to route that way is a priority if the americans come into q5 they've got the road covered but if you smoke it then you can run behind it so you're good you're golden so and that's that's just popping off the map and taking a look about hey this looks pretty good and but why well, how am i basing that off of right i'm not basing this off of where my units can be firing from i'm not basing this particular defense as an end game defense i'm basing this as based on where my guys need to route and be able to re-engage the enemy. If I route here, do the Americans care if they're going to re-engage? They don't care, they just sit here. The Germans aren't getting across the road, right? Blast these guys with their nine minus two. This guy's just, you know, maybe somebody just charges them, kills them, whatever. But these guys aren't getting across the road. We need to engage these guys. So I th I'm thinking of these buildings based upon where I'm going to end up routing and where I'll be after I rally. 
Same thing over here. If I'm rallying there, I'm not thinking, oh, how am I going to re regroup and come with these guys? Screw that. I've got 15 squads over here. A squad back over here, half squad, six plus one leader, far more valuable than three squads right here. Far more valuable because in that case, he can't even route back this way. And that, well, something like that, then you probably want a guy over here so he doesn't route to the side that we think might be the rally, you know, the fortress, the kind of fortress area. I mean, N3 is a beautiful spot. Nothing can see N3 unless you're way the hell on this side. And that's way off the beaten path. And that's going to have a hindrance to it as well. N3 is a highly protected hex. Anybody routing there is going to rally without DM very, very soon. Hopefully with the leader. So anyway, that's, again, sorry about beating that up, but it's just little little things you got to look about because this is such a small scenario, such a small number of units, you need to maximize the effectiveness of each and every squad. You think, oh, this squad's out of it. This guy's out of it. The DM, shit, my guys are broken. I've got nobody left. I've got to I got to win the game with everyone else. No, 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 no. You're thinking two turns down the line. How am I going to win the game? When both these guys' DMs come off, and the fight's just like this, which guy am I rallying? If these guys are breaking here, I might consider rallying him because most likely this side will collapse before that side. So I'm gonna rally him, get him behind there versus him because these guys are fully functional. That's the little decision making that you gotta look at. Eight or seven. I'll, I'll, you know, assuming that both of them are the same. Let's assume that both of them are the same just for the shits and giggles. Just so you go, well, Stu, this one's eight. Obviously he's a better one to rally. I'd say they're both eight. Same thing applies. Guys are starting to break over here. You need these guys gone so these guys can pursue over here. Because you don't want these guys chasing these guys down forever. Because where are they going, John? Away from the victory conditions. We have five turns. Let him be up here so they can't go that way. So they have to go this way. When they start routing this way, as long as we can protect it against that section, we don't care as long as he's outside of our, our victory condition hexes. So we got a bunch of Americans there. One guy does break. I'm not sure how, but uh, I guess the A firepower. Good shot by Dimitri. That's a five. Excellent shot. Uh, not sure why the nine minus two is with the three, three, seven. Maybe he's a badass or something like that. Uh, he rots there. Turbans pop up. Uh, giant stack giant stack here look at the germans right here prep fire who's he firing at that is a lot of firepower how much firepower is that, is that attack how, how much firepower is an r8 well, 20, 20 25 yeah, 24, yeah, 24 shot. Yeah. Right, 24 shot. If this guy breaks, does the German give a shit? If you're the German, are you afraid of this shot? Because we rallied over here. He chose the guy over there on the right-hand side. If we break, are do we give a shit? Because he has yet to move. Do we care? I mean, it's up to you. I mean, no right or wrong answer here, guys. Yes, we don't gonna, care. Yeah, we're not. We're not going to be be able to fire this guy if this guy runs this way. Can't fire on him. Eh, so he ends up here. He's still not still not in the victory area. He's only one squad. We're looking pretty good in the middle. I mean, we're looking good over here. We got this bad boy. This guy's still alive for some ungodly reason. This guy's still alive. That's a that's a beautiful spot right there. Why is this such a good spot? Because if he goes down here, again, it forces them to route only one direction. Do we want to go there? Eh, maybe, maybe not. Might be out of range for these other guys. He might be a little safer back over here. But he can still he still does some damage. He still has a threat. But if he breaks, who's the American have to who's moving in the American movement phase? And where are they going? Where do you think the American's gonna go in the movement phase? What's he doing in the movement phase? Or is he just going to fire more guys? What would you anticipate? 
He fired this guy at an A plus four shot on him. This guy's over here is it like a 45 minus or 45 plus two. Lots of firepower. What what could he? I mean, well, he's only kind of got two squads. It's not necessarily a huge amount he's going to do. I mean, right? He's he's got two uh, he's got two units. Who's going to smoke? I mean, three. Yeah, I mean the best he could probably do is one unit's going to try to smoke this look. Is going to try to smoke this location, uh, with this location, and I mean maybe I don't know. I thought he was going to be doing this. Maybe this guy assault moves to here and tries to smoke that, and then you hope this guy can get across if this guy's broken and that guy's broken. Can Can Mister Badass smoke R six? No, he cannot. Well, presently, he'd have to move. No, he cannot. Oh, smoke. Oh, oh, there's a three three seven there. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. So he's not doing anything. Yeah. All right. Right. All right. So, so All this right. guy's a non-factor. Yep. This guy, he can move here. What's going to happen when he moves there? It's going to get shredded. Yeah, we're going to we're going to definitely fire twelve plus two. So the only thing that could really happen in terms of the Germans, the Americans' offensive capability this turn, because that's why we don't care if we break over here, is we're rallying back here with impunity. Can we route through S five? Because we can't go to S six, right? Can we route through S5 to go to S4? Let's see the American gets over here. Is this a problem hex for us? Remember, we got to think of breaking. I'm bre I it break. Is not, it, it is not a problem hex. Why is that, John? <coughs> Too short a range. Too S5 is out of a range of a half squad. Half squad, three hex range. One, two, three. We could just have a party in S5 and not even care. So we just go to where whatever destination we can not go. We can go once we hit S five. We see this unit, and we can't get to Q five. Don't let your opponents do that. Don't let them route to S five. Go here, then go here. That's three hexes from here. This is four hexes. He has to go up on these locations. He has to go here, and he can't route to S six first because he'd be getting closer to the guys that just fired at him. His destinations are up through here. Again. Not a bad spot. I mean, the American might be over here. It might take him a little while longer. We have a 467 to drop smoke in case the 747 drops over here to get this guy back down. Not a problem. But offensively, the Americans really don't have anything going this turn because we blew our wad on this guy. How could we neutral as the Americans? Let's say we don't prep fire. And let's say we want to get over to S6. How could we do that? Smoke. Okay. How would you execute that sort of plan? Let's say, I'm just gonna remove these right now. How would you look at, look at, we got three squads, squad here, squad here, and a squad here, and a half squad here, okay? We wanna get, let's say we want to get into S6 is our objective hex. It's very difficult to get to S6. How are we gonna try to get there? Smoke is correct. So I'd want to smoke. I'd want to smoke R six first. R six would be uh, this is a highly sought after location to smoke. Absolutely, because it obscures all fire from these guys into this general direction. All fire. What about this guy? When is he, is this guy going to be part of the equation, or is he just going to be? I'm going to move him later. What's the order of movement that we want to perform for our guys? Based upon what you see here, and based upon this 447, this guy's the key. These guys are only going to be able to fire this direction, right? They only have a couple targets. They cannot fire at him if he moves this way. So these guys are locked center, center point right there. This guy has decisions. You want this guy to make a decision. He has one, two, potentially three, four targets that he has to worry about. Which one do we want him to worry about first? I want to move the 747 and X6 and have him bait out a shot that way. And that uh, lessens the firepower he's able to bring. Okay, where are you moving this guy? I would move him. Eh. I was thinking about that, but I was. Thinking about a little bit more of a direct approach, I'd uh, probably take it to uh, through W8 into V5. 
Okay. And he, then, he, then he'd have to worry about uh, are you assault move, something like that. Are you no? So if you if, if you do not see X, if you do not see X, and he sees you move down here, what are you going to do as the German? We're going to clone this guy. Remember, you have to think like the German. We want to try and bait a shot out. So if we move down to X6 and W6, <laughs> where's where's our most likely destination? Probably V6, right? If he didn't, yeah. I'm, as a German, I wouldn't be firing at him. Right, because he's he's done moving. What you what you could do, if if you want to bait, you remember we want to bait this shot, so we want to get to S6. I don't care who gets to S6, we want to get to S6. We probably want a leader and one squad. That's all I care about. One leader, one squad. Then we jump to close combat. It's going to be eight to four, two to one, minus one. That, I'm looking at two to one minus one at the end of this turn. I don't care if he, we both die. Two to one minus one. There's one less squad over here. And this guy, there's only two squads now. They're split. They don't have shit for firepower. I'm the Americans. I'm stacking guys here. This guy gets vaporized. Right? And if he moves, we're dropping smoke and going over there and go killing him anyway. So this guy needs to be occupied. We can't have him get a free shot because S6, R5 is where we want to be. I'm not just saying hypothetically. Whether, the, the, whether, whether it's this player's plan is irrelevant but this is how i want you guys to assume the situation if we clone here we don't double time he knows we're not going to get any further than u6 we're probably not going to be running down the street especially if we see this and then here here he's done moving so if we double time right one two three four five can we drop smoke on him you can only drop smoke in your own hex no right so if we double time and go one, two, three. Will he fire? Don't know. It's up to him. Right? Four. Right? Right. Well, now, now you could drop smoke in him. Right. Is yeah, he going to fire? Three chance. Is he going to fire? Don't know. He might fire. That's eight minus two. That's a juicy shot. Right? Most guys will fire. Right? If he doesn't fire, we're going to drop smoke on him. Six. What do we need to drop smoke on him? Two. Now you need a two. Oh, congratulations, Stu. He just got fucked. Now, since this happens first, and, well, assuming we, we survived any fire, but if he didn't fire, if he did not fire, that's what the result that we want. If that doesn't happen, no big deal. He's only going to get one shot anyway because he can subsequent fire on us. We actually want him to fire. We don't care if he breaks. Why? Because where are we going? either v5 or right back to where we started from and we do it again the two the, the next american turn after that so best case scenario this happens if he fires on s7 what is that modifier if we non-assault move into s7 i don't care about these guys this guy's gonna fire into s7 with a non-assault moving nine minus one seven seven four seven that'll be plus three plus minus one, one so you're looking at a plus two right Four plus two. Do we care about a four plus two? A little bit, but not much. Not much. He needs to roll five for pin task check. If he's rolling fives, give him the pin task check and, and pass it. And just say, well, that's a good shot. And say, good shot, buddy. And then you enter S6. And then he's probably going to... His subscores for fire in S6 is irrelevant. That's going to be four plus six. Or four plus five. That you definitely... You just laugh at him at that point. So you're, wait, wait. You're actually wasting ammo on me here? And uh, so, yeah. So, if this occurs, or if he first fires, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if we place smoke on him here, or he first fires on us when we get blasted here. Let's say we failed that, and then he says, okay, you drop smoke, I'm gonna, now I'm going to blast your ass. And I'm going to break you. Okay. Is the result the same from these guys' perspective? In a way, it's almost better because he has no shot at S7. Before, he had a 4 plus 2 shot. Now he's got nothing. Correct. We do have a broken unit. We're giving up a broken unit for not getting these guys broken. But this is not the objective. Getting to R5, theoretically, and possibly even losing a squad, is the objective. So, we're dropping here. We have a shitload of squads here. 
okay? How are you going to move these squads into R7? Are you moving them in as a stack? Are you moving them with a leader? Uh, what's going on? You tell me. You move them sequentially into uh, R7 and uh, individually try to drop the smoke into R6. As soon as you get that, it's student body north and you go into S S6. Because it's possible for the first one to get the smoke. Yes. Okay. Which guy are we moving first? And I just, why? Uh, I'd take the... I'd this, take either of the squads without the machine no, gun. Not that one. Would anybody take the guy with the machine gun and why? Well, he can't shoot anyway in advanced fire. <clears throat> Why, why would you take the machine gun? I understand why John wants to take the guy without the machine gun. Why would you take the guy with the machine gun? What is our plan? What is our objective in this movement phase? Engage uh, the unit in R5. Right. Is this shot going to be anything with no smoke? No smoke is an S6. A 4 plus 2? Do we care about that? No, not really. Six, no effect. That's actually a good roll. No effect. We <clears throat> laugh it off, especially if the nine minus one is moving in there. And again, because we're not moving this leader first, we could actually take a unit here, even if there's smoke in S S7. One, two, three, four, five, we still get to advance. So either leader, hell, even Mr. Badass can get over there. He goes two, three, four, five. Well, I think he's double time there. Doesn't really matter. But any one of our leaders can get to S6. So we just pick and choose whoever. Tell me why I would want to move my media machine gun there. It'd be a good base of fire for the coming uh, defensive. Tell me about the this movement phase. Yes, you, 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 well, you're going to advance him in there anyway, right? Because the media machine gun, like, yeah. John, like uh, Craig said, is you know fire base and the whole nine yards, right? Why would I want to move this guy here? First, not second, not third, not advanced phase, not assault move, not assault movement right there. Two movement factors. What are you going to do as the Germans? Are you going to ignore him? Do you think the Germans will ignore him? No. Okay. You can put, put residual down there. Okay. That's shoot the machine gun. I'm right. You got a sweet target. You got a machine gun. You're happy. You can blast it with 12 firepower. And you've got eight over here. So, which shot are you going to take? Probably 12. Probably this guy. That's reasonable, right? All right, we take our 12 shot. All right. Six, seven, eight. One round check. Let's say we fail. I'm not even going to roll, roll smoke. We fail the morale check. What happens now? Where are we in the game now? This guy breaks. We don't get the smoke off. Where's the... God dang it. Okay. What do we just do? We uh, push the second squad into the... Well, first of all, what, what what goes into that hex? What goes into the hex, gentlemen? Six residual. Yeah, six residual. Okay, there. okay. Five, six, yeah. yeah. Four, six. Not bad. Not bad residual. Not bad. Okay. Next unit goes in there. Oh, i got to hit this guy. Sorry. Hit this guy just so you guys can't see him. Next guy goes in there. Non-assault movement. Two. What happens? Immediately. Six plus two. Six plus two. Somebody roll it. Yeah, Stu, I, I, I think I'd send somebody in S6 and, or S8 and throw smoke into S7 instead. No, we're working on it. We're working on it. John rolls a 7, 6 plus 2 makes a 9 on the 6 chart. We laugh at you. We laugh at your residual firepower. Now what happens? I try to smoke uh, R6. Wait, wait. Does the German subsequent for his first fire, do you think? Ah. Uh, hmm. No. 
Not yeah. with everything that's stacked up behind him, no. Okay. That's reasonable. That's reasonable. Now we smoke it. Somebody roll smoke an R6. First one rolls by. There you go. Three. John, you're the man. Got it. What did we just do to the Germans? Blinded them. How so? Uh, they don't have any shots coming through uh, R6 into S7. How much firepower is he going to shoot at S7 right now? Let's say we moved nobody else. Let's say we bust our ass with our leader squads moving now. How much fire? Uh, six. Nothing. Nothing. What's this shot? We're moving nine minus one, boy. Steve, we're going. Uh, All right, nine minus one. We're going. Yeah, yeah six. Okay, so, yeah. Six plus one. Is that better? than that shot. What is that shot? A non-first fired stack of German units. It'd be a 12 plus one. Which shot do you want to take? Six plus one. Six plus one, he needs to roll a six for a morale check. 12 plus one, he needs to roll an eight for a morale check. Do you see what we just did here? What did we do? Increased his uh, chances of getting into. Right. We did exactly what we did over here. We baited him with a juicy target, meaty machine gun. Hell, you could throw the eight minus one to make it even juicier. Eight minus one, meaty machine gun, squad. A, goes in there, two. Not even assault move. Two. So we want to give him, because he doesn't have a minus one leader over there, so we don't want to give him that much. If he had a minus one leader, we might assault move. You give him a two. If you don't think he'd fire at the, just the medium, if you think you need to sweeten the pot even more because you may have played with this guy before, he only likes to fire at leaders, you throw him a bone. You throw the leader in there. And he takes that first shot. Same thing happens. He breaks. Let me close him. Sorry. Uh, clone. Unhip. He goes in there, he breaks. All right. <clears throat> you throw him a juicy bone. It's actually got a couple of nice chunky pieces of meat on it that he can gnaw on for a little bit. So he rips that first 12 shot. 12 plus 2. Boom. He rips those guys. He's feeling good about himself. He says the Americans aren't getting shit this turn. You know, he, this guy's broken over here. I just broke another squad. Another eight minus one. The Germans are going to win the day. And then you drop this guy in there. Takes a six firepower. You ignore it because you, he rolled a six and it bounces off the chart to an eight or a pin task check. And you just pass the pin task, whatever the case may be. Drops the smoke there. Six plus one. Instead of 12 plus one. Because this is the objective. Not getting a good order meeting machine gun in R7. That is not the objective of this movement phase because we could always advance in there. If we want to get that meeting machine gun in that hex, and if that was the objective, are we even moving the meeting machine gun? No, we're firing over here if that's what our objective is. If our objective is getting to R5, we're moving it there so this guy, these guys will hammer him and any subsequent squads that go in there don't get shot with a 12 either. They only get shot with a 6 from the residual, which we can take because it's a stone building. I mean, for God's sake, 6 plus 2 is the best shot we're going to get. You know, drop smoke. We can ignore most of those shots. Drop a smoke. We got one, we got four squads that can potentially try and drop smoke there. Four squads, but we just want one squad over. So he moves here. What happens? What, are the, what does the German now do? 6 plus 1? May or may not take the shot. Don't know. Let's just say he doesn't. This guy can't take the shot. Right? We're on agreement with that. He cannot take the shot. We go into S6. What happens? Stu, you just screwed up. You're between guys. 
Can we, first of all, can we route from here? Number one, can we route from that location or I'm just throwing guys away? That's the number one thing. Before we even move there, if I break right there, is my 9-1 dead in the 747? Is he dead? You can go to S7. Right. We can come right back. Why? Why can we do that? If he breaks... Where's he routing? What would what would be his destination? Ah 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 ah! Remember this guy over here. Yeah. No. Nope, nope. So we can't we can't go this direction. Where's he going? Oops. Well, he's going he's going straight down. I mean, he that's the only thing he can do. What? But what's his destination? Are we gonna low crawl? Maybe, maybe not. Low crawl would be dangerous, but it's a possibility. If we full route, where is our destination? Um, probably, yes. I mean, it have to be... What's within six movement factors? And we can't enter the R row. Well, technically, we could enter R10, but... We can't enter the R row, right? It's getting closer to this guy. Because we see him. Yeah, one. The woods? Where? Well, way down south. Yeah, T10. Right? T10. T10 would be six movement factors. That's oh, where this guy's routing to. Is he dead? That's the key question. We don't lose him. Or east. We don't lose this guy. Yeah, yeah, he either goes, right, he either goes right. to S7. Either low crawls. Low crawls to S7 or he routes up there, he, you know. That's routes. one thing you might think about. If these guys survive, right, if this guy survives, what happens then? We probably move the other medium here. Let's say our medium didn't break. We probably move the other medium here. Nine minus two goes here. If he low crawls there and we got a couple 747s over here, are these guys going to stick around and fire at that guy and take a... 22 plus 1 next turn with potential rate of fire it's possible he might stay there most likely he's going to skulk and get the hell out of dodge I, I might it's a 9 minus 2 with a couple a couple squads and a big medium machine guns he could legit vaporize all these guys over here okay that's a decision he has to make low crawling here is not a terrible decision 4 even don't really care about that why Eight morale, nine morale. I don't care about a four even on me. Can you fail those? Absolutely, you fail them all the time. Uh, if he's firing on him, he's not firing on a good order unit. We might lose a unit, sure. But, you know, these guys don't get attacked or this guy doesn't move. You know, if he prep fires, he's not moving. You know, then we vaporize these guys and go to town on him. But he could low crawl. That's a legitimate potential because Mr. Badass can get into a big stack here because if one guy breaks, he just routes back here with the eight minus one, he'll probably rally. He'll definitely rally at the beginning of the American player turn and no one can fire on him from that location. And these guys move up, get our fire group like we were discussing before. It's our giant medium machine gun fire group. And then we just lay waste to probably his medium machine gun. And then he'll never get that medium machine gun back. And so we essentially take out two squads. So he'll have to make a choice. Do we, Am I going to stay there and fire at a broken unit that I can kill? That's possible. Again, it's a one-to-one -one ratio in squads. It's something he might consider. It's legit. It's a, it's a legit risk. You know, it's definitely... Again, can he afford to break? That's the question. We don't have the Americans over here cutting our route pass. So 8-0 could be over here. Anybody breaks here, they could route back here and get rallied. That's possible. They won't die. This guy will be losing units. I mean, he'll be CR. The leader might die to a wound check. You know, you never know. But he's at least probably losing a half squad if we get a good roll. And if we route back and have to come back later and run across the road, come over here, so be it. You know, that's part of the game. That's part of decision making. That's a risk that you'll have to take, that you'll have to evaluate. You know, nothing's wrong. Either either as skulking back is fine, attacking this guy's fine. Doesn't matter to me. It just doesn't matter. That's your plan. Routing back here is the best thing the Germans want because now he's way out of the battle and he can't even get up here route back. But once he starts routing, if he goes to S8, he's got to go to T10 because he can make it. 
One, two, three. Actually, there's interdiction there, so he's really screwed. So that's the best of both worlds. He'll probably get interdicted here, and he gets interdicted there. So low crawl, by default, might be a good thing, because he's going to take two interdictions. Nine morale, eight morale, I wouldn't worry about it too much. You know, I wouldn't worry about it. But that's two, two morale checks both times. Free attacks, right? How hard is it to get a morale check in plus three buildings? Well, for a normal morale check uh, on these guys, it's like a free sit. Well, plus three, it'd be like a 16 shot. 16 chart is the same thing. 16 plus three is the same thing as an interdiction check. Are we getting a 16 plus three with the Germans in this game? Most likely. Uh, nah. Probably not. Yeah. No. Probably not. You probably want to split up your fire, but it might happen point blank late game. But this essentially is this, these are 16 plus three shots. Free free shots. You know, do we want to give them to them? I don't know. Again, something you have to evaluate. But we can, I just want to point out where he needs to route to is T10. Can't route here. We can't jump over the hedge because then we can't reach it. One, two, three, four, five, up oh, seven. Guy goes straight down, boom. So we know that if we break, we're still alive. And this is turn two. We have three turns to make it back up. With a leader, he can move eight eight movement factors on a CX, and then six, and then eight. So he's got high mobility, so that's not a problem. But we don't break. Let's say we don't break. Again, that's the number one thing. If we break there, do we die? Since we're not going to die, that's a good spot to be. This guy's fire attack is going to be four plus two. Irrelevant. These guys, subsequent first fire because you're two hexes away, what is their attack? They fire again, say, oh shit, he got across the road, didn't see that coming. What's their attack right there? It's like a six plus two. Well, no, plus four. How much firepower we got for the Germans? Well, if you include the machine gun, you get an eight. Right. And what's the modifier? Uh, it'd be a plus four. Plus four, because this guy is shooting alongside the smoke, and he's going to get the, the smoke modifier. He is better protected here than he was, than he, these guys were over here. And he's actually got a point-blank shot from this guy. Why? Because they first fired. Eight plus four. And a potential on a malfunction of the, on the support weapon. MG malfunctions. And he's a plus four. He needs to roll four for morale check. Five for pin task check. Do we care? No. Pin task check. Nine morale guy's going to pass it. Seven for seven. Good chance of passing it. If he pins, don't really care. We're across the street. We're in his face. You know, this guy's putting pressure, relieving pressure over here. You know, point blank shots. The Germans are going to probably take it. Again. Even if he is pinned, we're looking at an 8 plus 3 and a 16 plus 3 next turn. 8 plus 3 we can deal with. 16 plus 3 is a little more little more oomph behind that. Again, 7 is a morale check. We can handle a morale check. Not bad. But then we have 55 firepower going to blast these guys over here. It's okay even if we get pinned there because we'll be absorbing attacks. If he fires, the, someone gets destroyed. And if he breaks, do we care? No, we've already determined that's a safe spot to break in. So we simply low crawl or route back and take an addiction check. Your, the decision is yours. It's based upon what you guys decide upon that. I don't care. The, what your decision making is your decision making at that point. They're both good. They're both good, good spots there. At that point, what you might do is if you're sneaky, you might blast this guy because this guy might self rally. And then cause him to route, and then guess what? Now you can route into your stone buildings. This guy might be a slight pri if you've got a stack two four four seven seven four sevens here, and you got badass right here. You know, badass might blast the medium. The twelve firepower goes over here, and maybe, just maybe, he wants to route out of that building. If he routes out of that building, right here, out of line of sight, two one two three four five. Actually, he probably have to go up here. Uh, if he wants to route, he might low crawl. Don't know. Whatever he's going to do. Most people will route. Some don't. But if he does route, now we can come down 
come down here. Now we can come down here and not be quite so far away. Is it a big deal? Eh, probably not, not really, not really. So, um, and then of course, if we're not pinned, we can engage in close combat, two to one. We've got an ambush with a minus one modifier. We have an advantage in the ambush. We have an advantage in close combat, which we want. A, you know, that's, that's a, what type of advantage do we have in close combat? Not just two to one. Get your close combat charts out. Look at your advantage. He has a one to two against us. What does he need for a casualty reduction? Uh, two, uh, one to two, he needs a four. A four, okay. He needs a four for casualty reduction. We are two to one. What do we need for a casualty reduction? Uh, for two to one Sorry. minus one, yeah. Um, we, we need an eight for a casualty reduction. Yeah. If we casualty reduce him, what does he lose? Uh, it's not a trick question. Well, okay. Yeah, loses the half squad, right? Right. Two firepower. Right. And then if, he's down, now he's down to one to four. Okay. If he casually reduces us, what happens? Uh, it's one to one. Minus one. Oh, well, unless he gets the leader, I suppose. He could get that. Right? If we CR the leader and he doesn't die. And the worst that happens, it's now like a two to one even as opposed to a two to one minus one. Well, if we CR'd him and he CR'd us, what's the odds now in the second second close call? Oh, oh, if we, oh, if you CR'd each other. Oh, okay. Right. Let's just say we CR'd each other. It's now, now four to one. Right. We can afford a CR. We, he can't afford a CR. So not only do we have the two to one advantage on him, but if he CRs us, we may not even lose any firepower. The only thing we lose is the leadership modifier. We don't even lose any firepower. So it's still, even if we don't CR him, it's still two to one if he gets the leader. So we don't really care. We, we have insurance. This is the leader's insurance in that close combat. Do we want to lose a, he's an eight zero now. Do we care? How far is that? Is that leader going to be running units across the board? No. He's right at the objective axis. He's not going anywhere for the rest of the game, probably. He's going to be sitting there rallying units if the guy gets crossed. If we kill him, you know, we may end up dying. Not a big deal. The Germans have one less squad. This guy will be obliterated hopefully soon. And he has one squad on the side. It's just something we could attack. And you have to attack him. You know, you may not want to do it this way, but you, know, you, you kind of get my point. Oops. Undo. Oh, dang it. Undo the wound. So even if we get CR'd in close combat, that's not the end of the world. We still may have our 747 alive at the end of that CR. And if we kill him with a seven and he CRs us, we still may not lose any firepower. And then what's he got? He's got his two rally units right there that we're gonna vaporize. Because if we vaporize these guys or just vaporize him, then he can't rally anybody, then the game's over. Once he loses the leader of the game, this game's pretty much over. So let me let me unhip these guys. So do you see do you see how we we approach the smoke and getting this? We only have one smoke on the board, gentlemen. One smoke. This guy failed. This guy got blasted. We were gonna smoke him, smoke here, smoke here, and all you know the, the, the heavens will open up, rainbows will shine down upon us, and we'll find a pot of gold. We got nothing. We got a broken dude here. A broken dude with a medium and a broken leader, but we got a smoke and we get this guy in close combat. Where is, did we get our objective? Yeah, we got our objective. These guys broken. What are they going to need to rally next turn in the German rally phase? What do these troops in this hex need to rally? Uh, in which hex? Sorry. Uh, the one that we moved into to sucked up all of his shots. Oh, I mean, we're looking at uh, what leader takes a leader needs a four. Um, right, leader needs a four. Squad needs a uh, squad. Right, they both need fours. Do they? 
Where do you think Mr. Badass is going to go? Oh, well, yeah, if he, jump, right, well, if he jumps in, sure. Yeah, now you're talking sixes, right? Yeah, Badass is going there. Hey, he wants the medium machine up, up anyway. This yeah, medium's okay. probably going 2-4, right? Yep. Now what do we need to rally that unit? Mr. Badass is in the hex with his minus two modifier. Sixes. No, well, now you need sevens. All right, do you see, guys see the sevens? You're not self-rallying anymore. Oh, that's right. Self-rally, terrain bonus, minus two leader. So essentially we're taking three off the DM. We need sevens. Seven's not bad. Who do we want? Do we care about the leader? We want that eight, that 747 up. The leader can rally sometime else. We want the 747 up. So a seven there is good. Mr. Badass completely safe there. We got a squad there. We got one other squad in there. This guy's going over here. Or this guy might be following that guy up. You know, this guy makes it through. If he makes it through, shit, this guy could go one, two, three, four. Now we got two squads across the road. Now the chicken did get across the road. And guess what? We might actually take the medium machine gun across the road. Is this unit moving here to attack us on this side? We have a squad here and a half squad here. Is this unit going to move out and attack us? Not successfully. No. Mr. Badass is going to be safe. We have a 747 in this location. These guys aren't even coming over. This flank is protected. Even if we put three squads, and I mean, imagine if you saw, since all those guys fired, there's a little bit of residual in there, mind you. You know, not much. This guy's got like one residual or two residual. Two plus two, I don't care. This is potentially what you can have by dropping this one smoke there and getting this guy to fire there. Because if he fires here, if he doesn't fire here and we smoke this hex right and he fires here at 12 plus 1 what are the residual firepowers in S7 that the first units moved across in what's the firepower uh, normally be 6 but you're down 4 2 2 What shot did we take when we took that shot? 12 plus 1, right? Yep. Okay. When we move in that residual hex, because we're not moving here, because this guy could then fire upon us. That ain't happening. When we move into this location there with the residual firepower, because he chose not to fire on our medium machine gun over here, and this is the importance of baiting the enemy. See, he didn't fire on any of these guys. He says, screw that. I'm waiting for the juice to come because he dropped smoke and he got us. And if you're the German player, this is something you could definitely consider. Again, think of it both, both sides. This guy in the advanced fire phase, unscathed, is going to have an 8 plus 2 on us. Can we survive that? He needs to roll 6. Pretty good shot. Pretty good shot. It's actually better if Mr. Badass goes over there. Slightly better. A plus two is a good shot. Absolutely good shot. But these guys want to get to S6 and kick our ass. What is that fire shot right there? A two. What are the modifiers? Well, if you're moving in there, it'd still be a two minus two. Yeah, we're busting ass. We're going th full bore. Two minus two. What's the shot? What does he need to roll? Seven for Mirage check. The two minus two is essentially equivalent to a six chart. Six chart. Right. Okay. Minus two, every minus, you go up a chart. Boom, boom. So it's a six chart. We don't want to take a six chart there. Guess where we took the six chart? Right here. Six plus two. A little bit better. Two minus two. Next one. Two minus two. Next one. Two minus two. Then we have to come in here and take that shot. We don't want any residual in this hex. The smoke reduced it by a lot. A lot, right? There's still two minus two. We don't want to take a seven. He rolls three sevens. We have two, like Jesus. I mean, that's that's nothing's getting by that. A four, that's going to be a two. That's a K1. We don't definitely don't want that. The six is going to give us a one morale check. And the last guy running across is going to be okay. 
the last guy's going to be the beat machine gun. Can you put smoke in the two hex? Right. Residual hex? But if these guys, if the squads that are coming back are dropping smoke there, they can't get across. Right? If our objective was to get all these units across, not only this guy, right, but these guys. Okay, I, I forgot the objective was all units, sorry. Well, no, no, not necessarily all units, but at least the 9 minus 1 and 747. But knowing, taking a, taking advantage that these guys fired here first, right? Any subsequent shots over here will be nothing. Let's say he fires a 6 plus 2 over, 6 plus 1 over there, right? So the residual of that is what? Remember, because well, he fired it, on it, us. It, right. it, it, it wouldn't be anything. Oh, it would if there was smoke in there. Okay. No, what's the, remember, he fired on us. He fired a 6 plus 1 on us because we don't want to take the 12 plus 1. 6 plus 1 here leaves how much residual? Because he subsequently starts firing. How much residual is in that hex? Zero. 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 And then... He moves there. When the next squad moves into this location, doesn't get attacked by residual firepower. The two that he had before, two minus two. We don't take that two minus two shot, right? He subsequent first fired over here. Let's say we get over here, right? He can fire, he can fire. We already determined that's like an eight plus four. That's garbage. You know, if he fires himself, that's going to be a four plus, four plus two. It will leave two residual on that first shot if he fires alone, which is a better shot. Two plus two, we laugh at it. He needs to roll three for morale check. So we went from avoiding sevens. We changed the the avoidance of a seven. Now we have to avoid a three. Are you guys scared of two plus two if he has to roll a three? All three of these squads, the medium machine gun and the nine minus one, your second best leader, which is going to be around because you got nine morale, is now across the street, staring these sons of bitches in the face. We could throw two squads this way, nine minus one, seven four seven over here with a medium in this way. Uh, both of these units are going to be eliminated. Both of them are going to be eliminated. And then we still have some firepower over here. And this, this bad boy was here broken. And if he gets if he gets eliminated in close combat, he's just gonna route here. Guess what? He's gonna be up and running, and now we have one of squad. Even if we lose one squad over here, this guy's gonna be coming back, reinforcing those guys. So we still have three squads on that side. And he'll have one squad. That those numbers don't pan out. The 20 firepower plus three, it's not gonna happen. This guy's not gonna survive. Plus he's gonna be taking shots from here. That entire side collapses if this guy gets here. And he only gets there, he only gets there because we move a sweet shot, an 8-1, you know, sweeten the pot, 8-1, this, this. And if you need to really, really, really sweeten the pot, because you know he's looking for a 9-2 shot, I don't think I would move two squads in there because you can't afford two guys broken because these guys could counterattack. You don't really want to do that, but you want to throw the medium machine gun, non-assault movement, He's the first thing in his mind and the first thing in our mind is we're in a stone village Plus three shots are hell Especially if we're not combined multi multi fire groups or they're getting tons of firepower eight plus three is a shit shot But sometimes that's all we have It's garbage shot. So if we get an eight plus two or a twelve plus two It really looks good and we don't care if he breaks because we have multiple squads behind him We happen to get the smoke with the first squad and if that doesn't happen, we get the smoke with the second squad, and then two squads go over. And then one guy jumps into close combat with the leader here, the other guy with the 747 and the four and the mini machine gun stays behind, and he obliterates anybody that gets close. That's 20 firepower, Jason. He just obliterates this guy next turn. Eight plus three or twenty plus three. Which one are you taking? This guy is going to be running this way and getting in the back. Because there ain't there ain't no cover. You know, he might have to take an 8 plus 3 shot. You force him into that shit shot. He needs a 5. You need a 8. He 
needs a five for morale check. You need an eight for a morale check. Plus you get rate of fire. And then you need a five for a morale check on top of that. So even two squads dominates that location right there. So even if the first squad fails, we throw three squads in there until we get a smoke. We're going to get it. Three squads. We're just going to get it. It's like an 89% chance of some bullshit like that. So one little smoke here, one baited shot here, essentially spells doom for the Germans on this side on turn two. This is, this is how we want to use smoke. This is how we want to bait shots out. We don't care if he breaks. He already broke before. And he rallied. He already broke before. Even if he CRs. So he gets a really low roll. You congratulate your uh, your German opponent. It's a good shot. You kicked my ass. Don't care. My guys are coming across. Now you're going to be eliminated. You don't care. The, the 747 is not part of the victory conditions. Only in so much that he needs to occupy a victory location as a multi-man counter. And guess what? This guy could rally later. And when these guys start r running back over here, he picks up this one. This guy, these guys were not coming across the street. This, this guy, when he rallies, eventually come gets that one right there. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully that you know, the, there's going to be so much shit hitting the fan over here. The jerk, this guy's going to hear. He's going to move to 05. Maybe even up here. This is this is probably going to be abandoned at first opportunity. Um, and this guy is eventually just going to walk right in there with you know unimpeded unimpeded so one baited shot only one baited shot gentlemen we want we want that 12 firepower off of the table from s7 we want it off the table if we don't get a smoke there we probably don't move there because now it's a six minus two we probably don't and we just do the same thing next turn we try we try it next turn you know, we got lots of smoke. We have three exponent. If we fail three in a row, so be it. I mean, it happens. It happens. We, we all know it happened. We got actually five. At that point, the nine minus one could smoke him for himself. And then so that's two, four, six. He can still get there. And then the other squad, if necessary, one, two, three, four, five, CX across. CX the meeting machine gun across. Does the, is the plus one going to matter? Is a 20 plus three or 20 plus four going to matter? Is, is there a difference between the charts? No, it's insignificant. A 20 plus three, 20 plus four, insignificant. You need a seven or eight. Seven or eight for a morale check. Oh yeah, we, we, we screwed up. Anyway, third shot gets, gets a shot. So, but it doesn't matter. He's gonna be scared shitless anyway. He may run. We don't go, so if you're firing 20 firepower, 24 firepower, CX is irrelevant. It's just like if you're firing 24 firepower, right? Is is Mr. Badass over here with one squad and this guy here, is this a better attack chart than this shot or than this guy over here? Let's say, uh, oh, not there. Let's say we have this eight minus one, this stack. Do you want the eight minus one here and the nine minus two there or vice versa? Which, which would you prefer? Which would you prefer? Where are most people going to put their 9 minus 2 leader? Well, usually with at least one machine gun. Ah, usually the 9 minus 2 is going to go there, right? Okay. Take a second. We need to break units. He has 14, 16 firepower. Essentially be a 16 plus one. He needs a nine for a morale check. Okay, he's gonna get a morale check, one morale check. One morale check, we pass one morale checks all the time. I mean, mark my game the other day, I was passing morale checks left and right. Just left and right. He was getting good good rolls on me. I was passing left and right. Okay, so this guy over here, A plus two. What do we need an A plus two for morale check? We need a six. Well, let's change it up a little bit. We want to break units. Remember, are there any leaders on this side of the map? Any leaders going to rally any broken units over here? Nope. Nope. Nobody broken. An eight plus one yields a seven. 
for morale check. This stack here is going to be a 16 plus 2. Is this right? 16 plus 2, 10, 12. That's almost a pentastic. That's a shitty 10. 16 plus 2 means we need an 8 for a morale check. 8 plus 1 means we need a 7 for a morale check. They're almost equivalent charts. So we just need to roll 7s and 8s, which are the average. And we got morale checks coming out of our ass. He has just got a 7 morale. If he was 8 morale, he might want to beef up the firepower a little bit. 7 morale, these guys are going to break. Are all of them going to break? We don't need all of them going to break. This stack right here, how many units do we need to break right there? We want to break them both, right? We want to break them both. How many do we effectively really need to break? Best of all worlds, the 447 with the LMG breaks. Sure, right. Yeah. Right? If he breaks, what's this guy firing upon us when we're moving through smoke? Because we're dropping smoke like a bitch and getting across there. What's his attack going to be? Four plus one at best. Four plus one, he needs a five for a morale check. We're rolling sevens and eights. He's rolling five. Who's going to win that? We are. We break one unit this turn. We break the other guy next turn. Is he going to rally? Nope. If he is, he's back here. Is he in the objective area? Nope. This guy breaks a turn afterwards. He goes back there because they don't have a leader. Because he was DM the first time. He might rally the turn after that. Doesn't matter. We're in the area at that point, hopefully. All right. He's on top. Right? He can't even see this objective. We break this guy. This stack over here is probably breaking these guys. And we've got our 9 minus 1 assault group that's already destroyed at least one squad. This squad is dead. I don't care how you how you roll the odds on that one. Unless you get really unlucky, this guy, this guy is gone 100% of the time. You might lose some casualties. We don't care. Mm. We just control that building. Is he taking this build? Let's say, let's say we lose that guy and that guy for some reason. Casual reduced, choose those guys, and this guy's gone. And we have that. The only thing there, there's that guy. And smoke's gone. We got our we got our 16 plus 2. We got our 8 plus 1. We got this German half squad still here. For some reason, he's still alive. And this guy's broken over here. All this shit's off the map. I need to get this. Get that off. All this is off the map. All this is dead. That's the situation. Is he moving to S6? Nope. Is he staying there for any length of time? Nope. 20, 16, 8. 20 plus 3, same as 16 plus 2. Exact same shot. This is exactly the same shot as this, which is very close to that same shot there. So, a 20 plus 3, we need a whopping 8. 8 morale check, 8 morale check, 7 morale check. 8, 8, 7. Morale checks is morale check, morale check. Okay, he's pinned. Not bad. What happens? Close combat. We pin him up. He dies. This guy, the same moves here. How these guys gonna get across the street? Let's say we don't close, jump in close combat. How these guys get across the street? Smoke. We just smoke. Continue to smoke. Anytime you move across the street, if we got two squads here, we have three squads. Do we need them all across the street? No, there's not enough room. I mean, there's just. There's just physically not enough room. One guy's gonna smoke, maybe the next guy smokes. Smoke and then assault move somewhere. Smoke and then if that doesn't work, assault move over here. Maybe show throw a shot out. Remember, if he goes over there and breaks, you know, comes back here, what's he need to rally in the German player turn? He breaks here, route track here. Because guess, guess what? If we move into this hex, where can we route to? Even if the Germans right here, we can still route to our nine minus two because we know that mm -hmm. if we if we moved a unit up here into R six, where can we route to? Can we get to the nine minus two if it's the German player's turn? So if you want to break, which of these hexes do you want to break in? 
Do you want to break here or do you want to break here? Which one gives you the best chance of rallying next turn? First well, of all, I mean, if you're, yeah, if you're in Q7, then you Q7. can. Yeah, you Q7. can route back one. Yeah, you can route back one to the. Right, because if we're in R6, we can get to our 8 minus 1, which is great, right? Nothing's yep. wrong with getting to the 8 minus 1. We at least get that attempt to rally. That's absolutely fantastic. That's, that's you know, that's game plan number one has succeeded. This is a better spot because we can get to this guy. Do we want to route to this location? Probably not, because that means we need to move up when we rallied, and then he'll get a shot at us, and so on and so forth. You want to stay in these stone buildings. If, we, if we're taking fire here, he's not DMing this guy. We're rallying this guy on a seven. Let's route, that's a German player turn. We say DM this again, we're on next turn. Okay, now we're screwed. But we could self rally this guy. Oh, I actually roll Mirage checks, not really. No hit, nothing there. Next turn after that, okay, we're screwed. So in that case, we just get screwed. You know, you're not rallying anybody on nines, people. Like I have four, like three nines and a ten in a row. So that's just the way the the the, the dice bounce sometimes. So, but we're maximizing our chance to get that unit back by getting him a seven instead of a six. Six isn't bad for a DM. Six is absolutely respectable for being a DM. But we're using the rally potential or the morale factor of our broken side of an eight, knowing that we have an eight morale, knowing that we can route to our nine minus two leader. You know, we're good to go. And even if we don't like that shot, let's say we don't want to get DM'd all that much, but you know, in the next movement phase, let's say he DM'd us, you know, I don't even think that we can see that guy. Yeah, we can't even see the guy in S6. And technically, if we're here, we could then route this direction if we hate being shot by this guy for turn after turn. We could route there. We might be shot by him, but at least we won't be shot by him. And we get to move our nine minus two up into our big stack. Now the nine minus two does double duty. He fires all the machine guns, he rallies units, and, you know, generally kicking ass. Generally kicking ass. You know, this unit is still not going to come over. We've got two squads, a medium, a uh, half squad, 9 minus 2 leader. There's no way in hell he's going over. There's no purpose for him going over there. He's staying there. He's staying there coming over here. That's all he's going to do, you know. And this guy will not have this guy has this guy to worry about. Is this, are these guys going to fire at these guys? Uh, if he's desperate, he might. If he gets a breaks, then he could jump into close combat with this guy. But he needs both squads to get a one to one on this guy. How long are you going to be in close combat with that guy, gentlemen? At one to one odds, probably the rest of the game. Yeah, that's never going to be resolved unless you get a super ass low roll. And you got tied up two squads. Does the American want that? Absolutely. First of all, he's in the hex. So he automatically controls the hex, and if you come after, you don't control it until he's dead. And then how are these guys going to get across the street? Well, you smoke the living shit out of Q7, and you walk across the street with your ice cream, and then you just abolish, you know, then you then you vaporize some of these guys. Again, this this is going to be a cyclic. These Germans don't have to come across, but the N5 is like a little thorn in the bats. That's a hard one to see. Nobody can see this hex unless you're down here. Very, very safe hex. But if the American gets any forces in these, he's going to jump in close combat. But again, that might be turn five. That might be late turn four. You know, that's that's might not be a bad choice for the excuse me for the Germans to hang on. That's a very good spot N five. Very tough spot. But do you see how one little smoke? I, I this this is would be any of it. <laughs> when I scream smoke, this, I don't, I don't say everything has to be shrouded in smoke. We failed everywhere, but one location. How do we succeed? We succeeded by getting his most powerful shot out of his pocket. We took that shot away from him. We broke. We broke an eight minus one. We broke a seven four seven. And our medium can't do shit. Well, do we care about the medium? It couldn't fire anyway. The medium is not going to fire anyway if you move it. So it's like he's firing at a ghost. The medium was not going to be able to fire anyway. Right? And when we rally him on a seven, he's going to fire next turn. So we give him something that really doesn't matter to us too much. But what matters to us is that 12 firepower and two residual in S7 after he fires through that smoke. Oop, wrong, wrong counter. This 
is what we want to avoid because this hero came here. These heroes came here, took two squads to drop smoke there. Might take three. At that point, we still get two squads into S6 and we just kick ass. We don't want any residual in S7. We don't want the minus two bullshit. We want this smoke. This smoke eliminates all minus two. This guy eliminates subsequent for fire. Yep. It's so, so important that you guys see that. Once you guys see that, the game becomes real easy when you see setups like this. And you know that he's not going to come this way and pursue you because our victory is over here. This is where the game is determined. Could he? Absolutely. We already covered that. Is it a potential? That is a potential, especially if he's busting ass through here. Because at that point, if this guy pursued him and this guy made it easier to come across, and then he comes over here and he breaks, and he says, fuck it, you know, I'm staying there. I'm firing 16 plus 3. I don't care because if he breaks, he's up shit creek because he can't route backwards. He has to route up this way. And we at that point, if he breaks, what are we going to do with our 8-0? Let's say our 8-0 ran over here. This stack of shit went right here. Where's our 9-1? Let's say that we're right here. And we had our 447 right there. Let me get, let me get put this guy right here. Okay. This next turn. Let's say our 8-1 was there. Let's say we break that, and this guy is over here. This guy ended up right. He breaks. Where's he routing? He could route here, right? One, two, three, four. Absolutely. Again, when you're moving, you want to predict this. When he prep fires, when he prep fires and breaks this unit, what is this unit going to be doing, gentlemen? Is he coming this way, going that way, firing back on him? Where, what is this unit doing safely? What is I'm this sorry. unit doing? Yeah. Because this yeah. is this is the reason why we moved our 447 over here. To screw these guys over. And then the American pulls this heroic Yankee bullshit, right? But we, we know we've got an ace in the hole over here. So we take a 16 plus 3. Not the greatest shot. That needs a 7 for a morale check. Let's say we roll a 6. Give it a 1 morale check on this guy. And they all break. What is this guy's action? In, is he going to fire on those units? What's he going to do? Well, you probably want to... Well, I mean, you certainly want to make sure he can't... I mean, if you want to try to cut him off, you, you got to make sure he can't get there. Okay, how do we do that? From this from this perspective. Well, the... Um, Let's see, these well, guys are still here. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, that's kind of... How do we do that? Is it rocket science? So if you walk up to T6 and you stay there, right? He can't shoot at you. Ah! If you walk through. We got a medium machine gun here to light the living shit up out. But in but if you're in but if you're in B5, V5? No. V5 prevents him from getting into. If we move to V5. Can we come? What is the likelihood of us getting back across the street to screw these guys over later on? I mean, it depends on what your immediate goal is. If your immediate goal is to Our, destroy two and a half American squads, then it might well, be worth it. Well, what about assault moving to W7? How does that change the equation? We're here. Where's, where can he route if we don't move? Three, yeah. Okay, yeah. He can route to T5. He can ignore the same building, and he can keep going up here. If we move to if we only move to W seven, how does that change his route path? Well, yeah, now he's denied T five. Right, and then he has to go back down like he did before. Mm -hmm. So he can't get over here and go go behind us. He has to go down. Again, so, this, the same reason why we don't want this little bastard behind us. If this guy with the leader jumps behind us, now we we almost are, are forced to pursue him to keep that leader DM. 
we're almost forced to go after him. Stu, I'm thinking if, if he goes to here, I don't know where else he's going to go from there, and I don't care, but why can't I send one guy to chase him forever so he's never used again? That's my point. Is he's, you, he's, you want him to go down here, and what does it matter is my question. The same reason why we got rid of this guy and we don't want this guy coming back here, the same reason why he doesn't want us coming down here. If he breaks there, he doesn't get behind us. If we pursue him, what's the victory conditions? Well, Kill. you're keeping the American away from the victory conditions. Right, but if he rallies, if, if we pull these guys over here, right, they still have lots of firepower. They still engage us quite well. We have now one squad there and one squad off to the flank. If this guy breaks, this happens. Is Can this guy counterattack? If this guy can pursue him and then counterattack, not a problem. If this guy pursues him and this happens, and then we smoke the living crap out of this because we have three smoke and we're jumping across the road, we're either getting here or here, depending, because he's got like two or three German squads, right? Then we're just, we're just hop skipping and jumping across the road, right? Again, this guy is a problem for the Americans. Why? Because now we have vacated, we're vacating the spots over here. You can go two, three, four, six, advance. And he could just let last turn move over here. The Americans will get a shot on it. No, uh, no, the Germans get the last move. Yeah, absolutely. The Germans get the last move. So the Germans right. can just simply stay there and then assault move later. This is the reason why this guy needs to be dealt with. These guys, we want, if they're all bottled up down here, if he's DM down here, he can still move this way and continue to DM this guy until he gets close enough. Right? This guy's not going to kill him in one turn, maybe not two turns. But if he DMs him, stops him from, uh, he, because most likely he can still see units. If not, he routes here. Then we simply move adjacent, keep him DM again. We might get killed or broken. Let's say he fires on us and breaks us. We route low crawl or route over here. We can still see he still can't route backwards. So it's possible to keep him DM as long as possible. Same thing that we had up here, right? Except for now, instead of this squad being burned, to use that guy, he's here in the middle, and we're using our squad that we used to DM anyway. He's doing exactly the same thing, but we don't have to use two squads. We're only using one squad. Okay, thanks. Yeah. I mean, yes, we can pursue him down there, but if the Americans get across, just like our sem for like our three squads and our leader, well, let's say two squads and leader got across, even the one squad and the leader was disastrous. Because the CC we don't care about. We want to eliminate units. Get the Germans off the board. And then we could we could just take them with our firepower. It's okay to lose a unit. It's okay to exchange one squad for the one squad, one leader. We don't like it, but it's okay. Because we have firepower to break this guy, and then there are no other multi man counters over there. Other than the guy was right there. Assuming he's not the one that pursued him. Even if he's there, what's he gonna do? He's gonna assault move adjacent to a, to again. If the medium machine gun gets over one of these guys gets over there, that's twenty firepower to the eight, twenty plus three to eight plus three. We know who's going to win that fight. So it's while well, the one squad counterattacking the Americans does not work. It does if he's going to be there to to cut route pass. Now if he shows up here, even broken, and these Germans over here break these guys, and if they if they want to route, they either have to route up or route down. Again, crossing open ground. So you're stopping him, stopping the Americans from routing back here, not to get shot at, then to him coming right back with the front destroying you. You're forcing him, if he wants to route, to go other directions or stay DM most of the game. One unit. Unfortunately, again, if you want to do that with one of your squads, that's a decision you got to make. You have to weigh the consequences of splitting these guys up. Killing this guy or getting this guy out of the game or forcing him down this way, even one turn is pretty valuable, but he's going to rally eventually, and now you're going to have a 747 on your flank. And then this guy essentially can't hold this position. He can't, let me just unbreak him. He can't really come up to here to help the German, the, the, uh, the Americans. Because if he rallies back here, he simply walks back around him. He can't even fire on him. So that's the problem this guy poses. Even though he's a one squad, he broke here early in the game. He comes into play on turn three, turn two, turn three. 
His turn one movement and breaking doesn't really matter. He just comes into play later. He rolls an eight to rally. And if you move over here and charge the, the, the Germans, you're one, two, three, four, five, six advance. CXing. Now you've just cut all their route paths off. They have to route that way then, which is what you want. You want them out of your victory conditions. Hmm. So think think when the well, again the routing is like I said before, routing, people think of it in the beginning of the route phase. And then each individual unit that they think of it then. You think of routing when you start to attack. When we start to attack here. Q7, R6, where do we want to be? Q7, because that gives him rally next turn. R6 gives him a chance to rally not as good as we had before. Move units forward. We're going to break. We don't care if we break. Our objective was to take his attack. Suck up that 16 firepower. I don't care if he's got 20 firepower. Is he going to kill us with a 20 firepower plus two? Is there any chance of a KIA on the 20 firepower plus two? Uh, I don't have my charts here with me. Um, with, but with, I'm thinking the answer is fairly close to no. Yeah, no. Even if you're all snake eyes, there's no leadership direction. So he's going to cower. So that'll drop to 16. It'll still be a K3. So what? He just burned up 16 firepower and he got a half squad with a snake eyes. And now he's final fired. Mm -hmm. So at that point, if he final fires on a snake eyes right there, mm -hmm. how does that change the equation, gentlemen? This guy gets vaporized. He gets vaporized. He's a clone. He gets vaporized. How does that change the equation over here? Where's all the Germans? Where the, I, I don't care how many Germans you put all these put all these Germans up there. Let's stack them all up. I don't give a shit. All these guys. <laughs> Why don't you put a Panther tank in the hex too? Yeah, yeah let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Just wanted to hear me laugh. You're you're that a good guy, Steve. Okay, he, uh -huh. he 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 scores the snake eyes. Worst possible problem for us, or is it? We lose a half squad. And we've got eight minus one seven four seven right here. Oop, no, 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 not break. Damn it. Well, if he was your yeah, if he was your first unit, then yeah, you you as the Americans celebrate. Right. Why do we celebrate, gentlemen? Because now you can basically waltz into S six without practically any problem whatsoever. If he wants to fire on you, then he's going to take final protective fire, which is exactly what you want him to be doing. We don't even need to put smoke here anymore. Yep. He can't fire on us. These guys are moving here. He can't fire. He blew him away. These guys are final. They got adjacent. We're immune to fire. This guy over here, I don't even think you can see him. Oh, someone's got the LOS string out. This guy can't even see him. Uh, nope, not at all. Line of sight for this unit to here is blocked. I guarantee yep. it. So you waltz into S1 without even dropping any smoke. Guess what? We've got more squads back there. We lost one squad, then we throw, I think we had two other squads here and a squad here. We got three squads in here for free. And guess what What happens when this guy, because now both these stacks can't fire on us, what happens when he fires on us, if he chooses to? It's a final protective fire shot. Final protective fire shot. What did we just incur? What, how, what did he just incur on this shot here? The shitty 16 plus 2 shot. We have a 9 morale. What did he just incur? Morale check. Yep. By us moving, we got a morale check. We're essentially we rolled an eight on him, on our giant stat sixteen plus two shot. Sixteen plus two shots. We just rolled an eight on him, except for he rolled an eight on himself. If he rolls an eight or more, they both break. And guess what? He routes, and then we just we he just gets decimated. So even the snake eyes is not even a problem for us. Even the snake eyes, we don't care about. Because now we don't even have to waste more squads trying to put smoke there. We just walk on by, baby. We walk on by. And then he has to take a morale check if he wants to fire on us. And he probably will have to. Because we're going to have three squads in there firing at what back at him in the advanced fire phase. If we have three squads in this because that's what we put in there last time right because we know that's 24 plus two yeah that's 24 plus work. two that's pretty stupid we only need a 10 for morale check he's better off firing at us 
because at least he he'll roll an eight for morale check or seven for morale check. If we roll a ten, he takes a morale check. Mm -hmm. So, if I were the Germans, I would much rather break myself with a chance of breaking those units and putting more residual firepower in there than having the Americans just vaporize us. Because why? Because we know what they're like. If the situations were reversed, if these were Americans here and, and three German squads here, do the Americans final protective fire on that stack of German units? I think it's a little easier question. I think it's a little easier no than more of a yes. Why? If the situation were reversed. Well, instead of a 24, it'd just be a 12. Yeah. 12 plus yeah. 2. Plus if two, he, you're down one, two, three charts. 12 plus one, 2. He needs a 7 oh. from round check instead of a 10. Mm -hmm. Right? And plus, you know, if we're Americans, if we break, again, nationality distinctions. If we break, we have an 8 morale. Our morale goes up. That's how you decide whether you want to find a predictive fire or not. If we're four, three, sixes, conscripts, you're just hoping for like a four or something like that. You need a super, super, super little roll. You're going to break. But hey, at least you get a shot. If that's the only shot you got and he's going to break you anyway, because if he needs a 10 for a morale check, you need to roll six with the pass to be pinned. He's going to jump you in close combat and vaporize you anyway. So really look at it. It's like, okay, if I don't fire, what's he going to do? He's going to kick my ass. The answer is yes. If I do fire, at least if I, if I throw that one punch, maybe I can get that one punch in against that giant, and maybe I get lucky and pop his glass jaw, but if I never take the swing, he's never going to go down. So that's some things you got to risk. If he's going to obliterate you anyway, you might as well take that one shot because you never know what will happen in this game. But... Um, not ex I gotta be honest. Not exactly where I wanted to go today, gentlemen. But, <laughs> but I you, think you love this game, Stu. But, yeah, but yeah. all the other games were very similar. I mean, we went to turn. <laughs> we got to turn one. This is like a record. I didn't get shit done. But we got to turn one. We dropped one smoke grenade and baited two shots, and we are in great position. Okay, if you move all your units up in the front line. Don't drop any smoke. I don't know what this gentleman did. I don't know what happened in this game. There's like five of them. They're all pretty much the same. If you don't drop any of the smoke on the line, you're just punching across the street. Well, thank you very much for watching this episode. I want to send a special thank you to the Russian ASL group. You know who you guys are, Dimitri, all those guys. You guys are doing a bang-up job. You are submitting lots and lots of logs into the Scenario Archive for which we can gather and analyze your guys' gameplay and take many situations that are very different even amongst your own games and we're taking and looking at those and seeing how we can become better players by using your logs. So thank you very much for your contributions. It is not unnoticed. As well as all the people that submit their normal logs through ASL ladders. We are accumulating logs through the ladder play. And then once we approach three or four logs, we pull them down and we analyze that particular scenario. And also, not only are we analyzing that scenario, we're using that scenario and we're incorporating the basic principles of ASL in getting things done, achieving our goals, completing our plans. Simple as that, a little bit of analysis goes a long way. Learn to route, and you'll be fine. We'll catch you next time on Tactical Tuesday.